Hey there, it's Long Rider, and today I thought I'd show you how to create your own custom objects using the Select Tool, Move Tool, and Rotate Tool, and go through kind of how you use them to create very, your own houses that you can use in your maps instead of using just the uh, um, prefabs that they have spread throughout the different categories. So here we go. So the first of these tools is the Select Tool, and this is pretty self-explanatory. You select a bunch of stuff like that if you hold and drag. And then if you hold drag and then hold alt and drag, it deselects half the stuff that you put it over. Or you can hold shift and select to select the multiple objects. Hold alt and select and click. There we go and it deselects. So you're basically just selecting and unselecting until you get what you need. You can also do hold control to kind of do both. Select and deselect. Whichever method you prefer selecting objects with, go with. The move tool, surprise surprise, is for moving objects. You can do side to side, up and down on any axis you want, combine of two, until you get the object to where you want it to be. And you don't even have to stick to these guidelines as well. You can turn on the snap grid and mess with the grid size. We'll just say for this, put it at five. And then you can hold shift while you have the object in your uh, sights and then drag and it copies it to a specified length, which is perfect for like lamp posts and other kinds of things like that. And if you want to select all three of these, you can hold control while the move tool is still active and select these and there you go you have all three within your grasp <laughs> and you can move them wherever you want you can even copy and paste on the other side of the road with the lamps there you go now it's like an even surface another th cool thing to do with the snap tool is snap with object size so that way you always have an even um, go of things when you try to copy and paste and it's very in flux and you have no issues to worry about like with flashies or anything like that one of those big no-nos. <laughs> and another tool, which I probably won't go over too much, is the position tool, and that just moves it a certain amount. And I tend not to use it because I'm more using the snap grid and snapped object size, but if this works better for you, then I'd go for it. It might be a smooth transition if you're going from Xbox to PC to use that one, because I know that tool will get a lot of usage on the Xbox. And the next tool we'll go over is the rotate tool, and you use that for rotating things and you just can rotate it whichever way you want like that up down there you go and for PC using snap angles is awesome so you can always have like direct shapes so you can let's say copy and let's rotate it 45 degrees there we go and we'll copy and paste it again like so and bang now let's say you have these two objects and you want to make a like perfect circle if you go and rotate it like this It'll be off center, if you notice. See, so watch. We need to rotate it all the way around. It's going to have that weird little indent. But if you don't want that, select both of them again, holding control. Go back to rotate. You can use center of selection. And what that does, it moves the pivot angle to directly center. So now, when you copy and paste your objects, like so, and then turn it, let's get at the right angle. Bang. Now it's perfectly centered, and now you can make a perfect circle with this if you wanted to. It's going to be great for creating buildings, or uh, like shapes that you normally couldn't with generic, or anything like that. Like a, let's say you want to make a, a spinny windmill. <laughs> there you go. This is almost halfway there. <laughs> okay, so for this example, let's say we want to be building a house. I change this to simple bricks, and I'll change this to simple bricks. And if we want this to be perfectly in sync, see, look, there's like a little uh, crack in between. Maybe you can kind of tell. There we go. Better angle. You can see through it. If you don't want that, the best way I'd say doing it is by aligning to object. So it moves it so that way the end of it is perfectly in sync with the doorway. So now we can move it, and there we go. We have a small wall built for this doorway. And we could take this, copy, and paste and then rotate, one wall's done, and then we'll copy paste this, then we'll grab it with control, like so, hold shift, click, and then we'll do center of selection, it's still on that, and turn this all the way around, like that. And then I'm, I don't know if these will line up, but we will see, so not quite. So there might be some adjustments you'll have to do. We'll turn off that for now, and bang. There, now it should be mostly in sync, and we'll just finish it off right here, snap grid. Okay, now we got a wall of our very, very basic house done. 
and it's time to add a roof. So I guess what we can do is um, grab these objects, hold shift and click, and then drag them upwards and we'll change the texture just for its, so we get some like different colors going on. And is there a roof tile? Let's see, roof slate tiles. Roof slate. There we go. Now we have these selected and we'll move them into position. Let's see, use snap grid. We did want that off for now. So drag that a little bit out and then we'll go to the rotate tool and I'd say 45 degrees. We'll use control to select everything like we just did and bang. There we go. Now a small little half of a roof. And if we want to copy that directly to the other side, same thing. Just hold shift, click to copy, and then switch to rotate tool, turn all the way around, and then move into position. It should be just about right. So if we turn on the snap grid, move it like that. There we go. Now we have the roof pretty much complete. <laughs> and that's a quick little house that isn't a prefab and probably looks awful, but if you do more work to it and keep continuing with it, you can make something that would look great on your own. <laughs> Well, thank you for watching this tutorial. Hopefully you learned something from this. And hopefully when I start doing the more advanced things, you'll be able to follow along with those and do it yourself. Well, thank you for watching. Have a good one. Bye-bye.